In this video, we're taking a look at this video that has over 51 million views that dissects five pretty cool at-home engineering projects, but the video has no explanation of what's going on engineering-wise. So that's what this video is for, and we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees. Welcome back to the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. So if this is you, make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe. Check out the links below for lots of cool things like our Discord server, the 1% Engineer Kit, and more. Comment below if you wanna see more videos like this in 2021 or whatever questions or issues you're having in engineering, and we can make a video just for that. Let's get right into this video. The first video is a super simple concrete pour for an at-home driveway. The first engineering related thing that you see here is that they're using wire mesh or reinforcement for the concrete which is very common even for something like an at-home driveway because you never know when a large truck or something is going to show up that could crack the concrete and damage your driveway. So concrete is very commonly reinforced with either rebar or in this situation even some simple wire. They're using a bobcat to lay down the concrete. Very cool. Bobcats are one of the smallest, maybe the smallest construction vehicle that you will see. So it's clever that they're using this. The worker is using a rake with boots. Very cool. Concrete's going to stick to anything. So instead of doing it from the outside, they're just walking in it with boots. Using a board to flatten out the concrete. Yep, pretty standard. This is very cool. I really like these long rollers. As you know, moment arm, the longer that that arm gets of a tool, the more force or more strength that you have to have to keep it up. Probably a nice shoulder workout there, but it's really clever. Here you see another really cool engineering feature that a lot of people might just look over. So these fake lines that they're drawing in the concrete, they're actually called expansion or control joints. So concrete, just like anything else, expands and contracts with temperature changes. So these joints are installed to specifically make sure that if the soil shifts or during these expansions, the concrete doesn't crack and become damaged along its larger sections. I really like this, how they're laying down on the board. It makes me think of what you're supposed to do if you're stuck in quicksand or if you're on a frozen lake and the ice is cracking, you're supposed to distribute your weight. This is a really good pressure example. If you walk over to your wall and try to press your hand right through it, that's not going to work because you're distributing all of the force over this entire area of your hand. But if you take all of that force and same type of muscle, same type of strength and push it into a thumbtack, you're going to go right through that wall because all of that force is concentrated into one point. You see another cool engineering technique here. This is actually Actually called brushed concrete and what they're doing here is they're creating a slip resistant texture for the surface I'm sure all of you have been in someone's garage or a basement where this was not done and if it's wet and you don't have the best tread on your shoes you can slip on concrete very easily so that's what this is for and finally this spray that they're putting down it's actually not paint I know that's what it looks like but this is a curing compound and the curing compound for concrete is used to prevent evaporation from the moisture of the concrete it actually takes 28 days Days for concrete to fully cure and reach its maximum strength. So in that time, you need to make sure that the water stays in the concrete so it doesn't get dry and brittle. This is also why in hot desert environments, curing concrete is a nightmare. A concrete mixing truck, it's doing two things. It's not only keeping that mixture moving, but it's actually keeping it cool. So that's what this curing compound is doing. Also in sunny conditions and hot weather, the lighter color is reflecting some of the radiation and some of the heat, keeping it off there so the concrete can cure. Okay, scene number two. This is a company called Rockwool in Europe, and what they use is something called mineral wool for insulation. Mineral wool is a fibrous material formed by spinning or drawing molten mineral or rock materials such as slag or ceramics, and essentially what you see here is them mixing up this mineral wool into a powder, and then they're going to use it to insulate this simple home brick wall. The worker is going to drill holes right through the concrete in between the the bricks and then use this vacuum apparatus to move that mineral wool mixture into the wall. Why would you want to do this? Lots of reasons. So uh, this could be for thermal insulation. It keeps your house cooler or warmer during the winter. It can provide soundproofing. It can provide fireproofing. It can provide moisture proofing. Lots of benefits of insulating a wall and primarily it's for the thermal insulation. You'll get the return on investment from the insulation cost of something like this after just a few years because you're going to retain so much more of either 
your cool air during the summer or your warm air during the winter. All right, scene number three, Kohler. You guys might recognize the Kohler company as they make a lot of faucets and bathroom products. They've been around for a long time. And here you're gonna see an at-home installation of what they call their real rain system. It is what it sounds like. It's an additional shower head that's trying to replicate you taking a shower in the rain, which apparently some people like. He's installing a separate valve here for the shower to control water flow and temperature. A valve is just something that you could turn off and turn on for the flow of your water. And then you can see this arrow in the valve that shows the direction of the water. And then he's threading the valve into the inlet pipe. Next, what he's doing here, you need support framing for a valve. So everyone's been in a situation where they turn the water on, especially the hot water in any building, and you can literally hear the water running through the pipes. That's called a valve hammer sound. And a lot of times a valve will rattle around and make a lot of noise because the water is flying so quickly through the pipes that it actually creates all this vibration and then you can hear it. And over time, this can damage your pipes, it can damage your valves, so you need to reinforce your valves. It's gonna apply more sealant tape to the threads and then here he's gonna thread the outlet pipe into the valve. You wanna make sure that you test the water before you fully install the wall because that would be horrible to put your wall through and then your valve isn't working properly or you mess something up. And then here you see this green piece is called a plaster guard. You wanna cover up your valve opening where you're gonna put a button or a faucet or whatever for access to your valve. And so now you'll see that the wall is actually there and finished. You still have your plaster guard. And once the wall is installed, you can remove the screw, take out the plaster guard. And this white piece is called a leak shield. It gets installed with two screws on the side. And then the center is threaded into the valve stem, which should be flush with the leak shield. They add plastic bearings to the push button. And then this is the face plate over the leak shield. He's making sure that the button isn't loose. You want to test it. And if so, you can thread the valve stem screw a little bit more. Next, he's going to install the bracket for the real rain overhead panel, which requires a drop ceiling, as you can see here. You have to do some mount support framing and you want to make sure that that's level. And this pipe section here is called a drop ear elbow. You want to secure the, the elbow into the framing. These gold pieces that he's putting on the corners are called leveling nuts, which doesn't provide any threaded support, but it intends to level something like the shower unit itself. Now he's putting in the whole unit, tightening the nuts on the corners, and you want to make sure that the seal between the unit and the wall is actually closed and tight. There's oftentimes a foam gasket on products like this, so it actually keeps that seal tight. Then he's going to test the water. You will always want to test again just like before you actually put that wall on test your water connect the quick elbow to the copper pipe where the water comes from once you know that it works and these frame edges have nice hidden threaded connectors Here you see the, the covers for the corner fasteners on this part of the system. Now he's moving the rain panel into place and he's locking the fasteners with a screwdriver. This is a cool feature here. If you hold down the button for a second, you can activate the deluge feature, which essentially is a heavier stream of water in the center, as you can see here. Really cool system. Scene number four is installation of a kitchen soffit. If you go into your kitchen, you're gonna see part of your ceiling that's dropped and your wall that is actually coming out of the wall. And so you have this section where you can actually hang your cabinets. That's what a kitchen soffit intends to do. And that's what these guys are gonna install here. So first they use a laser level to mark exactly Exactly where their soffit is going to go and make a few pencil marks and then they have a chalk line that you pull back and it makes a perfect line exactly where you want that to be and first they install the lower border of the soffit which will be a track for the drywall panel which is parallel to the ceiling as you can see there's a whole bunch of framing here to actually hold up the drywall drywall is made of gypsum so it's really heavy which is why you need two people to install panels and sometimes they'll even use this lift apparatus here to move up larger sections of drywall so it doesn't snap here you see them using drywall tape. It's a rugged paper tape designed to cover seams in the drywall. The best tape is not self-stick, but it's held in place with drywall joint compound. Here you have them using spackle tape. It takes time for the spackle to dry. Spackle is a product that is used to fill in holes or seals between drywall, which is exactly what they're doing. And they don't show it, but the final step after all the spackling is complete would be to paint this kitchen soffit. And then you're ready to install your cabinets. The fifth project here is what they call floral the wall. It's been trending for a couple years. I have seen it in a few people's homes and this is how you would actually install it. So first you have the fastening rails that would ensure a perfect interlock. You want to mark the positions of the rails on the wall. He's using a spirit level again to align the rails properly.
properly and marking the drill holes. Boom, drills right through the drywall super easily. And these things here are called wall plugs. You, you need them for putting anything in your wall that's more than just a picture frame because over time that drywall will get damaged and chip away and then your screw, your nail can fall out. He's starting on the left side and you wanna make sure that you face the groove side upward so you can build the floor along as you go. He's also going to use a spirit level again to make sure that the first boards are actually level with the floor so it doesn't look a little wonky. You want it to be a perfect rectangle. Just aesthetically, that's gonna look better. Here he's marking the center point of the rail on the rear of the board and he's screwing down rail clips that are gonna allow you to clip the boards into the rails here. And then he uses another fastening clip to secure the installed board on the top side and the following boards must be interlocked with the already installed boards. You can just keep adding boards however you like, small pieces, long pieces, whatever pattern will do. Some people will wanna get a little creative, make a cool design, do whatever you want. And then when you get to the top, just like the bottom, you can trim off the groove side and the final clips will be screwed down to the top of the board. You can snap them into the rail and then finally you wanna finish with molding frames so that you don't get splinters and chip away the corners of your wall floor over time. So there you have it guys, some engineering explanations for this very popular video that I cannot believe has no narration so you don't really know what's going on unless you're a contractor or somebody who flips houses or a carpenter. Guys, if you like this video, let me know in the comments below and we will make more things like this. We're gonna be doing some experimenting in 2021 to figure out what types of videos we should be making and what types of things that you, 1% Nation, want to watch, so let me know. Thanks for checking out the 1% Engineer Show, guys. If you're a 1% Engineer and you wanna to rise to the top 1% of your career, then make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe. We have 140 engineering videos on this channel for your engineering success, so make sure you check out more of those and we'll see you again in another video. Bye-bye.